worship and adore you. We bow ourselves before you, giving you the glory that is due your name. We magnify your name, glorify your name, oh We magnify your name, glorify your name, O oh God. We magnify your name, glorify your name, O oh God. We magnify your name, glorify your name, O oh God. We magnify your name, glorify. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none. 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 There is none like you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's a testimony in itself. Amen. There is none like Jesus. Hallelujah. You can search the world. You can search anybody, but there is none like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. And you are good. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. So good, so good, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People of every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. You are good. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. So good, so good, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. So good, so good, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. So good, so good, yeah. Yes, you are, yes, you are, yes, you are. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. People of every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you 
for who you are, for who you are, for who you are, and you are good. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You are good all the time. Amen. God is good all the time. No matter how bad things may look, God is good all the time. It may look bad. It may feel bad. It may sound bad. But I thank God that his words say that it is working out for my good. Amen. No matter how bad the situation is, I thank God that in his eyes it's good. I just need to come up to what his words say. Amen. So I just thank God. This morning I'm going to introduce the speaker of the hour. He is the thorn born in my neck. Amen. <laughs> but I thank God for Deacon Johnson. I could not imagine coming to Liberty one day without him aggravating my nerve. <laughs> Whether it be Sunday morning, Tuesday night, or Thursday night, Deacon Johnson always got something to mess with me about. But I thank God for him because he kind of keep me in line, you know. But um, he's a one that I know he studies the word. He's always on somebody case. Amen. Jesus. I'm sure I'm not the only one can attest to that. But um, <laughs> he's just doing his job. Amen. So at this time, without further ado, I will bring to your front none other than our very own Deacon Willie Johnson. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. She volunteered for that this morning. Praise the Lord. We had a guy with a very interesting Sunday school lesson this morning. And after we had the Sunday school lesson, I'll tell you something that amazed me. And I'm not the this one. Miss Yvonne can test it, this one. She getting on the ball. She getting on the ball. <laughs> I didn't even have to fight with her. I didn't have to pray for her. I didn't have to print a lesson for her this week. She was really, really there. And I thank the Lord for her. And I thank the Lord for each and every member of Liberty United. With our pastor in his absence, let us continue to pray for him that he be blessed. As Ms. Yvonne say, her up and come home. Because we don't want it. When out here, we get comfortable. With him, we get on our toes, ready to go. We thank the Lord for him because what we was talking about this morning, some of us in Sunday school was saying that how they was afraid of big churches and things that goes on. But here, we get to know each other. We get the word all in truth. And one thing about it, and we get to live the word that we have been taught in Jesus' name. But it's all started when, from the beginner's class to the round table to Sunday school, everybody's there. And I'll tell you something, the word of God is a powerful thing because when you really need it, it walks right in your life and you and God can have a conversation, just you and him, in a lot of situations that comes up. Today we're going down to Judges the 6th and Israel. I've been walking around with this in me. I don't know how long now. So it's time, Lord, say to bring it out. Because it, it hits so many and so much of us. And the call of God, because one thing about us, none of us didn't come here on our own. A lot of time our head get big. 
like Deacon Johnson and say, well, I guess I get saved now. I told the biggest lie I ever told to myself because without God, there was no way that I can come to him. Let us stand for the reading of the word. I'm not going to read all of it, a whole verse. I want to read down at least to the 22nd or the 23rd verse and then I'm going to go for there and we're going to, I don't know if it be just part one. I'm not going to make it stay too long. And, but I wanted to get to certain good points about our life today and Israelite, Israel life during that time. Judges 6 out of the King James. He said, and the Lord of Israel did, and the children of Israel did even in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of the, Mid of the Midians seven years. And the hands of the Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens, which are in the mountains and caves and the strongholds. And it was, and it was, when Israel had sown, the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, and even they came up against them, and they encamped against them, and destroyed the destroyed the increase of the earth till thou came from that I come unto Gaza and left no substance for Israel neither sheep nor ox nor ass for they came up with the cattle in their tents and they came as grasshoppers or mother tooth, for mother tooth. for both they and their camels were without numbers and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, the Lord, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said, which said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I bought you from up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the hands of bondage, of the house of bondage, and I deliver you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hands of all that oppress you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whom land ye dwell. But ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under, under the oak, which was in Ophrah, and that pertaining unto the Josiah, Joas, the Amorite, Amazite, and him and his son Gideon, threshing wheat in by the winepress to hide from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befall us? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of? And seeing, did not the Lord bring us out from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and had delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord broke, and the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto them, unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in, in Manasseh, the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianite as one man. And he said unto him, If thou have found grace in the sight, then, shall, then show me a sign that thou shalt thou talk, thou talketh with. Depart now hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my presence and set it before thee 
And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made, made ready a kid, an unleavened cake of the ephron of flour, and flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth, broth in the pot, and brought it out unto, the, un, unto him under the oak, and presented it. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cake, and lay them upon his, this rock, and pour over the broth. And he did so. And then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and unleavened cake. And they rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cake. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon proceeded that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, at last, a Lord, the Lord God, be far because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, and said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then did him build the altar there unto the Lord, and called it Jehovah Shalom. Until this day is it yet in offer of the Abazin. By here in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We come to give you the honor and the glory today in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you today to continue to bless Liberty United Worship Center, each and every one of the saints, one by one and name by name. Father, watch over, guide and bless them, keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. Father, continue to bless our pastor, Father, and his absent in Jesus' name, Father. We give you the honor and glory for him, Father, his wife, his family. Bless us to Austin as they're on their trip, Father. Keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding right now. In Jesus' name, let your word go forth, Father, that I may decrease where you may increase. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. We thank the Lord this morning for what he has given us in each and every one of our lives. I just read some of this because I don't think at this time I'm going to be able to get through all of it. But I really wanted to bring out a good part of it with what we, what the Lord has given me. There is a part of this that I really need you to see. Because one thing about the Lord, when he gives us something, I've, I come first on the list, and today I'm really first on the list because when I read this and was studying it, it really gave me a time for the day and a time for yesterday where I come out of. My life was not perfect. Anybody that says his life was perfect, that he don't need God, he's got troubles. A lot of times in my life, I would come to church and I would just come because it made me feel better. It did something for me, but I don't know what because as my pastor said, I would have died. I would have been hell open. I would have went straight there because I had nothing in me to keep me from going there. The lesson that we, the thing that we're going to read today is a long lesson and it looks so much like us today. It's a lot of things in this lesson that, in this word today, that it has really amazed me. There's so much. And when you go to thinking so much in about God, this morning, I keep coming back to the Sunday school lesson this morning because God says, what have I done to you to make you so disobedient to me? What have I done to you? We become, in a thing I was was going to study one time, but it got off track. How we overlook God so much. We have a tendency to overlook God. Why do we overlook God? One point this morning, that is that our mind, our system, our seeing this bodies, we could be blessed so much, and then we can see where a curse come. You bless so much, you say, let me see now. I'd have been blessed so much. Let me see how this curse feel. You just can't stand it sometimes. 
And the reason I say that because what we're going to read today is about Israelites. One thing about Israel, Israel was a blessed nation and still is a blessed nation. That nation so blessed, but they're lacking one thing, believing in Jesus Christ. I know in this lesson, I could tell you from just a study, they have been in and out of system. And as you read the first verse, he said, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Midianites seven years. You have to understand that as long as you stay inside of the law, you have no problems. But once you break the law, you've got a problem. God gave his law to Israel. All he's wanted you to do is continue to be obedient. But one thing that they did not do, they was in and out of worshiping Bala, Astro, anybody. You wanted somebody to worship, worship God. Your life prosper when you're worshiping God. Your relationship with Jesus Christ make your life so prosperous it's not even funny. He said, in the sight of the Lord, a lot of times we believe God is blind, that he can't see. He sees everything. He knows everything. He ominous present. He's everywhere. Why is it so difficult for us to understand that? I don't know. Israel been in and out of jail. Right now, the Midianites got them in jail. I use that term jail because it's a term right now. If you want to look at this, they say Babylon had them for eight years. It say that's in Genesis, and I'm going to say Judges 3, 7, and 8. It say the Moabs had them for 18 years in 3, 14, 17. The Philistines had them. They didn't even count the years they had them so long. And then they turn around, and it says the Canaanites had them for 20 years. And the Midians had them for seven. That's the least they ever stayed was seven. They still got to go back to the Midianites. All this time, they were in and out of God's blessing. Because of why? They're disobedient. Not God. God gave them everything that they needed. They prospered. They knew what it was to be blessed. But they couldn't handle it. God is blind, so he couldn't see, so I can go back and worship Bala. God saw all the time. He said, I give you so much time, and that's it. You have a time to get it right. Then why is it that we get it right? So he delivered them into the hands of the Midianites, the Midians. The Midians was Abraham's second wife, one of her sons. That's who they were. That tribe came from Abraham. Corin was his second wife. And so what did they do? They are in now. That's the same tribe when, excuse me, when Abraham. Take that back. It was not Abraham. That was the second tribe, which Moses, when he left Egypt, he went and stayed with the Midians. That's where he got his wife from. He stayed with the Midians. I want you to see and understand who we're dealing with. But the thing about this, they was in captivity for seven years. And during later years, they went into captivity from Babylon for 70 years. That's a long time to be in jail, to have somebody standing over you. You were their slave. You can't do anything unless I tell you to do it. You know, that's the problem with a lot of people don't understand about the system. The system puts you in a place. They tell you when to get up, when to go to sleep, what to eat. And a lot of us who've never been in the system, you can't handle the system. How can you adopt to a system that's so cruel? These people had to wake up in Egypt and they had to go to work. If they didn't go to work, they got beat. Which one do you want to live in? 
Do you want to live in liberty or you want to live in slavery? Every one of us love the sight of liberty because you can do what you want to do. You can eat what you want to eat. You can do anything what you do. Why would you put yourself in bondage when you don't have to? It is your choice to put yourself in bondage. God takes you out right now. We're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, but we have a tendency to put ourselves in bondage by sinning. And there's no need to, because one thing about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you, say, don't do that. No, uh, Holy Spirit don't know what he's talking about. And then the consequences come. See, when you do evil in the sight of the Lord, Lord, give you a chance. He say, repent. I'm going to give you a chance. Repent. I'm going to be with you. All you got to do is repent. Israel, I say, no. We love worshiping Bala. We love him. He love us. He's a nobody, but he love us. One thing about every time God sent them into servitude, one thing he did do, he still looked after them. 70 years, he sent them in Babylon. What did he do for them? He looked after them, told them to build houses, progress themselves in a foreign land. That's love. You tell me somebody been to jail and say that the guards love them? No way. God used these people, the millions, to get his people back in line. What did he do for them? He said the hand of the million prevailed against Israel. They couldn't, if they was in God's favor, they couldn't do it. Don't care who, when they, when they was in God's favor, don't care who come up against them, they could not do nothing to them. They would win every time. Every time you come up with a situation in your life, who do you depend on? You're going to go crazy at the beginning. But you're going to say, Lord, take care of this. Lord, I put it in your hands. They did and let the Lord put somebody over them when he could have been over them and prospered their life. And because the Midianites and the children of Israel made them dens, which are in the mountains and the caves and strongholds. Let me tell you something. How would you like to live? In a house with air condition that can stand and prosper you? Or would you like to live outside in a tent where there's no air condition and the heat out there now packing in the index about 100 degrees and sweating every day? Where would you like to live? It's a choice which you have to make. And the reason I tell you about them two choices is because why? One of the choices, the house with the air condition and the mansion, where is it at? In heaven. The house with the tent and the heat and the burning fire and brimstone is where is that? In hell. You've got to make that choice. I'm telling you what this lesson today is about making good choices. Because if you want somebody over you, all you have to do is ignore God. That's all you got to do. Overlooking. Don't let him have nothing to do in your life. Keep sinning. And I'll tell you something. The Midianites, they had to be, I'm going to tell you something. I had to leave my home. I had to go to the caves. I had to heal out caves so I could do something and protect my family. Because when these people came, they say sometimes the, the caves were so big that they could hold 4,000 people, according to the commentary. This stronghold that they had to keep them because that's the only way. It was a small path that could go in there. With that small path going in there, they could defend that. But it could only hold so many people. It could not hold a nation. So who didn't get in there, they suffered the consequences of them being out there. And let me tell you something. And it was so when the Israel had sown, the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east even they came up against them. We come to grow, we, we as the Mennonites, we come to go grocery shopping. We come to feed our animals, take your food. All, they say when they sold, when the crops come in, that's when the Mennonites showed up. 
We come to get everything. We come in like locusts. We bought everything like our sheep, our animals. They got to be fed. And all that we didn't bring, we took. We took your food. All year long, you prospered. You ate good. You growed your crops and you say, man, this is going to be a good year. And then somebody cut shows up and take it all? Leave you nothing? That's just like your soul being without God. It's nothing. Boy, let me tell you something. You're in the United States. You've never been hungry. I'm not talking about because there's no food in the house. I'm talking about hungry. During the drought in Africa, i never forget it. They were showing the kids. They were going along picking up little rice or whatever they could pick up. If one kid picked up one and he ate it, if he found another one, he would give it to the other one. Little pieces of rice, he wouldn't eat both of them. He shared it. This is hungry. This is a drought. When somebody come in your house, you just done bought groceries for the month. Let's say just food stamps or whatever. You got all of them. You don't spent your three hundred or four hundred dollars and got it all in the refrigerator. You say, "Oh man, we finna live this month. We finna eat this month." It feels good. You open the refrigerator and look at it and say, me and my kids going to gain some weight this month. Right? But then you got the kids, y'all go down the street and so when you come back home, all of it's gone. And there's no way that the state going to replenish what we've been taking from you. Now here you go. Boy, look at him. How am I going to handle this? Say, boy, when they, they encamp, they destroy the increase of the earth. Thou till the grass to gaze it, that from one end, from the Jordan River all the way to the Mediterranean, and left no stuff, substance for Israel, neither sheep nor or ox, nor ass. For they came up, they came up with the cattle. They bought everything with them. See, they bought everything. All the grass going to be eaten by the animals. That's why we bought them all. All the food going to be taken by us. We are not going to leave you nothing. Nothing. You've got to, when we leave there, you've got to go out and plant another crop. And when we plant that crop, in seven years when you plant that crop, God gave them seven years under the midnight. So what do you think happened every year or every six months? These people showed up and went grocery shopping. In your shop, it's your grain you work hard for. But see, there comes a time when you know you can't do nothing about it. Because why? The Midianite had God's favor on them. Israel didn't have God's favor on them. When you have God's grace on you, you are protected. Don't care who comes up against you, they can't do nothing. Because God said, you belong to him. You are my people. When you are my people, he can't lie. That means he's going to be your overseer. That means he's going to be your protector. That means anything comes up, he's going to handle it for you. All we have to do is turn and look for him. Say, Lord, I can't do it, but help me. I'll tell you something. Understand this. When your back is up against the wall and you can't see yourself out of any way, you'll do the same things that these Midianites are doing. I mean to say what Israel is doing. They know where to come. Don't care who they worship. Don't care who they bow down and everything to. But when their back was against the wall, who would they call? Look at your sixth verse. And the great, the great relations are so great. They greatly in prophets because of the night. And the children of Israel cried unto who? The Lord. I don't need him. 
For seven years, I did not need him. I don't even want nobody to talk about him because I got Balaam. Balaam's looking out for me. Their eyes so closed and they're so blind that they can't even see what's happening to them. They feel it, but they can't see it. What did he do? Boy, let me tell you something. Let something come upon you. And you know that you can't handle it. You done been in it so long that you become to think about, ain't no outs for me. But there is an out for because the first thing they figure out, one thing, if I can't do it myself and I need help, I'm going to call on the Lord. I'm going to call on him. Lord, help me. I don't care if it's one person or nation. All you have to do is one thing, just ask. Ask. And one thing about him, when he see, he's not blind because he's going to see your heart. Are you pretending? Or are you in distress? When he see you in distress and your heart is right, what he's going to do? He's going to help. Because why? You are his. You belong to him. Don't care how much you mess up, he still loves you. When Peter denied him, he still loved Peter. Don't care what you do. He still love you. We could put in our own mind that he don't care. Out of all Israel denied him, he still loved them. He bought him. Let me tell you something. So God is going to let you understand one thing about him. I'm going to show you where you went wrong at. You went wrong because you denied me. But now you need me, you're calling on me. Seven verse. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the children sent a prophet, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of hosts, Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you what I did for you. Just like the Sunday school lesson this morning, I'm going to tell you what I did for you. What do he say? I brought you up out of Egypt and brought you forth out of house of bondage. You was in slavery. I just didn't walk in there and go to battle for you. I didn't fight man to man for you. All I did was show Pharaoh my power. When I showed him my power and who I was, because things that I did in Egypt can no man do. I tell you one thing, it's on the Sunday school this morning. One thing you have to understand, all the miracles God did, but one of them told that one of them brought them out of Egypt. He said the firstborn in Egypt would die. When they got the, when the firstborn in Egypt, the next day was they found them dead. He said, get your stuff and get out of our country because we don't want no pause of y'all. You're going to kill all of us with your God. He released them. Brought you out of Egypt from the bondage of slavery. I delivered you. But it's a funny thing. I brought you out of slavery and then I bring you out and put you in a good land and then I have to put you back in slavery. That's for your disobedience. All I did for you. And see, I delivered you out of the land of Egypt out of the hands of all who oppress you, drave them out before you, and gave you their land. I took it from them and gave it to you. A land with milk and honey. A land houses you didn't even build. Property that you had no rights to. Because I love you, I gave it to you. Because what I had promised in my word, it was coming to truth. And he said, in the 10th verse, and I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whom land you dwell, but ye have not obeyed, you have not obeyed my voice. Your disobedience 
has impoverished you. Your disobedience showed me that you have no respect or honor for me. But I'm going to tell you something. When you're obedient and you go through jail, provish, all these things you went through. And one thing about what I just read, he's telling them one thing too. You know what it is? If I did it once, I can do it again. If I freed you once, I can free you again. And I'm telling you, I can do it. You know, one of the most powerful things in the church that we don't hear much time is testimonies. When God do something for somebody these days, it's just like, oh man, I can sit on this. This is something great. But if you express it, look what God have done for me. Your spiritual life, your physical life, how God has blessed you. And how God has, I'm going to tell you something, sometimes I'll be so amazed at the things that he was doing in my life. Things that I asked for. And they show up. Great deals that you get. We are ourselves are the biggest hindrance of our life. God want to prosper us, and what do we do? We deny our own self. Well, God say, I'll tell you something. If I was God dealing with me, I'd have been kicked me to the curb. I'd have been kicked me to the curb. I don't need the car I own now. You know how long it took me to just to find a car, to buy the car? My mind be so messed up. And it was, you could see, I said, this is a nice one. That was a nice, this good. Nope, 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 nope. But I got a wife. Boy, that's enough. But then when the one he, he said, one he showed me, I went down there. I was talking. I said, nope. He said, yep. I said, nope. At this. This is what I want. I'm talking like I got 900 credit. And I'm sitting there talking to that man like, I got 900 credit. I do have 900 credit with Jesus Christ. And I walked out of there with almost what I wanted. Because I believe and the one thing that I love to say, seek ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything will be added unto it. I've seen my life go up, down, up, down. I've been in the world. I've seen it go up, down, up, down. I've seen how the Lord works now. I see how he bless. I see how he prospers. Let me tell you something. Not physical prospering. I'm talking about knowledge with wisdom and understanding and a lot of discerning. This thing that we talk about today, <coughs> excuse me, how God, how we turn our own self inside out. And there's no reason for it. When you are blessed, when you are favored, when you are God, God grace, when you have it all, why would you want to deny it? Why would you want to deny it? There's no reason to deny it. When you come on this side, it's say, oh, there's nothing to do. You Christians, all y'all do is just sit around and chat and pray and all this stuff. But let me tell you something. This is the most peaceful, liberated life that you ever want to live. When I come to Liberty and start cleaning the church, I got so crazy, I didn't even want people to come in the church because they might dirt it up. But God told me, he said, look at here. This is my house. This ain't yours. I got that point. Because my mindset, my mindset began to grow. It's not about you. We all can take care of self. But it's the Sunday school lesson that we've been studying. It's about the other people. Solomon was blessed because when God asked me, what must I, what can I do for you? Solomon told me, say, give me wisdom, right? Give me wisdom, wisdom to rule your people. And once he got wisdom to rule his people, God gave him everything. He wasn't thinking about himself. He was thinking about the next man. This lesson is telling you right now, right? 
that all you have to do is depend on God. All you have to do is be obedient to God. All you have to live is Christ-like. That's all he's asking you to do. These Israelites, all they had to do was be obedient to God. He said, because you're obedient, you can't have food to eat. You can't live a normal life. Why? Because you're becoming disobedient. Disobedient don't only come when you get grown. It comes when you are a young person too. We can all say we wanted to. I, we all went down that road. Who I am, what I want to do. I make them decisions for my life. Boy, let me tell you something. Young people, if you get saved right now, I'm going to tell you something. One thing about this, God will prosper your life with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You won't even know where you got from one point A to point B without blessing and worshiping him. This life that we live have so much peace and understanding that you wouldn't have to be fighting, where am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? That you'll have to live in a cave like the Israelites doing. You have to leave your homes. When you become disobedient, this is the consequences. It's a great lesson on consequences. Verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord that sat under an oak tree which was in offering. And pertaining to Joash, the Abedazite, right, and his son Gideon, threshing wheat by the wine press to hide from the Midianites. Boy, let me tell you something. Can you see yourself? You're supposed to be in a threshing floor, pouring up wheat where the shade would go and the wheat would go to one side. But no, some say by some of the verse say by, and some of them say in. When you down in a hot wine press where there's no grapes to make wine, so what you trying to do? I'm trying to fig get me some food for myself by straining the wheat out inside of a wine press where it's hot, where I'm not going to get all my crop. Well, I'm not going to get all my crop because I can't do the process the way it's supposed to be done. I'm hiding. Where am I hiding from? I'm hiding from the people who are going to come and get it. They done took everything from you, so why are you going to stop them now? Boy, but then here come the Lord. He done sent the prophet. Now he's sending who? The angel of the Lord. I'm going to show you something. He said, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, Lord, with thee. The Lord is with thee. Thou mighty man of valor. That warrior. And what is the warrior doing? He's down in the, in the wine press shivering back and forth. He's down there just throwing wheat up trying to mix, save a little food for himself and his family. He's down there working by himself. And then here come the Lord. The Lord comes down there and talks to him. Now you're going to call me, I'm dying here, and you're going to call me a mighty man of valor. Warrior. Do I look like a warrior? I'm covered in shave. I'm down in a hole sweating. But see, one thing about God, he does this. He does this. He called the end where? At the beginning. He told Moses, he said, go get them people out of Egypt and bring them right back to this mountain. He don't tell you what's going to happen in between. He might enlighten you a little bit, but he wasn't, he's not the honest one. When God told Abraham, he said, I'm going to change your name to Abraham. And Abraham means father of mother twos. That man, he had no child, nowhere. He said, but he's a father of mother two. That's a father of many. He's a father of many, and he had not one child. He told that notorious Peter, he said, Simon, I'm going to change your name to what? Peter. One who denied God. But he fulfilled as a rock. He did what God told him to do. Paul, he changed, changed his name from Saul to Paul. And let me tell you something. Each one of them, nothing easy happened in their life that much. Because why? They was chosen and called by God for their purpose. You are chosen and called by God 
for a purpose. When you receive the Holy Spirit, what do he give you? A gift. The gift is for you, for the body. You're called by God. You're not called by nobody else. He called you. You see, through the book of Judges, each person that performed a duty in Judges was called by God. There's Samson. There's Deborah. There's Gideon. There's a whole lot of them all through the Judges. They all had a purpose in God's plan. You see, Pastor Boone, our pastor, have a purpose in God's plan. We talk about him and the word. That's how without him and his encouragement and his leadership, how many of us can stand up here today? It's God's grace that bestowed on us that he, he, God gave us somebody who to teach us and guide us. We've got the Holy Spirit to teach and guide us. But somebody, when you've got somebody to encourage, when Paul came to the Lord, he went to Jerusalem. They didn't want to accept him. But Barnabas was called the encourager. He told him he doesn't change now. You see, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said to him, The Lord with thee. You see, thou mighty man of valor. The man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befall us? And where be all this, his miracles the out that which our father told us and saying, did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianite. You know something? Your eyes go forward, but they don't come back. As much as he knew about the Lord, he denied one thing that was going on in his own yard. He had an altar there for Balaam. He had an astral pole there in his yard. See down in the verses. See, all the things that was going on, why couldn't I see that I was being disobedient? I didn't serve other gods so much that I didn't know, understand that I was disobedient to the true God. The prophet just told him, all these things, well, you know, you come out of Egypt, he brought us out of Egypt, but he's forsaken us now. Why would he forsake? just didn't walk away from you for nothing? You had sin in your life. You want God to overlook the sin in your life so that you can go on being blessed? <clears throat> Wake up and smell the roses. You got the wrong God. You got to repent. You got to forget. Then I'm going to tell you something. You've got to change your life. You have to change your life. For that relationship with God, he's still there because he loves you. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. But then you want him to work inside of your mess? Pastor Bone said, if you're going to commit adultery, come down and lay right down there and do it. But see, God sees everything. God knows everything. By him seeing everything and know everything, he already decides what he's going to do and when you're going to do it. You can't fool him because he's not blind. You want to think you hide. You can hide from man day in and day out. But tell me, how can you hide from God? Our minds say we're smarter than him. But we don't, I don't reason our mind tell us that because God knows how dumb we are. And he said, God forsaken him because he can't see. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianite, and say, And have not I sent thee? You going with God. And said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is, is in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. But when God tells him to do something, we can always find an excuse. Moses said, Lord, I can't talk. Then God got angry with him and told him, so you better get your brother. Then he went on the side to do what God told him to do. Just like we do, we always can find an excuse. God said, witness to that person. Oh, Lord, he looked like he might be terrible. 
I don't want to be bothered with him. God say, talk to people. Witness to them. Priority job. See, Gideon is playing a role that I'm the least. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. There's one in this Bible I didn't think about. He was, a, he was so notorious, man, that when they anointed him with oil, the only thing he thought about was them few little sheep he had out there. That was David. They were thinking about them sheep. They loaded him with oil and said, you came. Went right back out there with them little sheep. But he done killed a lion and a bear and a big seven, nine foot man. And said, he said unto him, if now, see, one thing we have to understand too, God say, I'm going to be with you. He didn't say he was going to be anywhere else. He say, I'm going to be with you. Don't care what comes up, I'm going to be with you. Don't how frustrating you get, I'm going to be with you. But you know something? How do it feel? You've got the third part of the Trinity in you. You've got God overseeing you. You've got every connection with the word of God, which is Jesus Christ. What more could you want? Tell me, what more could you want? You've got a full shield on you. I'll tell you, look at this way. You sit on TV where a man take a gun and try to shoot a ghost. How many times he hit a ghost? Not once. Because what? Think about this. If God is with you, don't care who throws things out to you, they bounce off. You might think that they are sticking to you, but they're not. Because he's greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So if he's the greatest and the world is here, he created the world. So if anything's not great, because why? He's with you. He's a part of you. He oversee you to know who he is. I'm going to read the last verses and I'm going to close out. I tell you, this is going to be just one part of this. And he said unto him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a, a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart, not hence. Told the angel, say, don't go nowhere now. I'll be right back. I pray thee until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. The angel told him, say, I'm not going nowhere. I'll be right here when you come back. And Gideon went in and made a kid, a goat, an unleavened cake of the Ephraim flour. And in flesh, in flesh, he put in a basket and he put the broth in a, in a pot and brought it out unto, the, unto, unto him under the oak tree and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, take the flesh and the unleavened cake and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. And the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the shaft and was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cake. And they rose up in fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cake. And then the angel of the Lord departed out of his hand. And then Gideon presented, perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, at last, O Lord God, for because I, was, I had seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee. Fear not, thou shalt not die. And Gideon built an altar unto the Lord and called the Jehovah Shalom. Until this day, it is yet an offering of the Abedazite. See what he did? The first faith. He wanted God to show him something. God said, go get it. Now he's sitting there on the tree. He got to let man go in and cook his little meat and bring his little broth and his cake out there and bring it out there and sit it on the rock. He said, well, if I came face to face with God, what did he do? Lay it down there. And when he laid it down there, the fire didn't come from the top. It came from the rock. 
and consumed it all. I'm going to die. Because you say, if you ever see God face, you will die. I'm going to die. Because I've been face to face with God. See, the purpose in Gideon's life, he haven't quite grabbed it yet. Because why he haven't grabbed it? He only saw one sign. When you read through this, there's more signs to come. When the thing that I got that you don't is that faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. Understand what God told him and God showed him who he was. He said, I'm going to be with you. Don't care what you're going through. I'm going to be with you. He said, one man going to get rid of all these locusts that's coming into your land. He said it was a number that couldn't be counted between the Midianites, Amazites, and the tribes of the east. They couldn't be counted. That's how many people. Anybody ever seen on National Geographic when the locusts show up in the field? They don't leave nothing. But he said, now these are human beings. He said, I'm going to send one man to take them out. If you read chapter 7 and 8, you would have a judges. You have an idea of what I'm talking about. Because why? God can take one man and do the most amazing thing that you ever, you couldn't even believe because who he is? He's God. It don't take an army for him to defeat the world because he already got the world where? In his hand. I used to sing that song, he's got the whole world in his hand when I was in Sunday school back in the day, Craig. I thank the Lord for the message this morning and what it applies to in my life. It's more to it. But I wanted you to see the outcasts of who you are. We are the children of a living God. There's nothing de dead about our God. We can't serve nothing but the living God. Anybody else can't help you. All the money, everything that you see all these people with, everything we desire in the heart, it can't do you no good without God. Without Jesus Christ on your side, your life is a mess. You see they turn to drugs, commit suicide, they do everything. But when you have him on your side, you have all you need. You don't need no more. Because let me tell you, there's nothing like being Christ-like. And we thank the God for the message this morning. And we thank him so much for saved, sanctified, and filling me with the Holy Spirit. Because without that spirit, I can't do nothing. I've seen a time where I want to watch television, go to sleep, watch television, go to sleep. But you can't do that. You can't rest. Because, boy, when that spirit go to shaking you and making you jump up at night with something to do, I thank the Lord for the message this morning. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Anybody want prayer?